Hi, and welcome to the April 3rd, 2013 Plastic Reconstructive and Cosmetic Surgery Journal Club, uh, coming to you from St. Vincent's Hospital in Sydney. My name is Damien Marucci. I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon. This is Anthony Barker, who's one of the plastic surgery registrars here at St. Vincent's Hospital. So Anthony, we did four papers today. Uh, the first paper was on the um, repair, of, repair the of the anterior cleft palate fistula with cancellous bone graft, a simple technique that facilitates dental reconstruction. This was out of Dublin, Ireland and was published in uh, a very recent PRS. So essentially this technique described, uh, the technique described results in a three layer repair of um, any sized uh, anterior uh, um, palatal defect. Uh, the, um, what's done is basically the whole mucoperiosteum of the palate is raised as one flap based on the uh, greater palatine uh, vessels. The nasal layer is then repaired either primarily with or without uh, the use of resorbable collagen. Cancellous bone is then harvested uh, from the iliac crest and used as a middle layer with the mucoperiosteal layer of the hard palate then resuspended uh, to form the oral layer. That repair is then protected by a custom made splint uh, that protects the whole of the hard palate from uh, probing tongues and uh, uh, fluid and food. So what was the gist of the results of this paper then, Anthony? That's right, so out of the 29 fistula repairs they did, they had good uh, closure in 23. So from the primary closure, 23 of them uh, no longer had their fistula. They had to go back and do two more with the exact same repair, uh, in which case they got total closure at that time. Only two had partial closure. Only two patients ended up with partial closure. Importantly, those people complaining of nasal regurgitation, none of them had issues uh, after uh, the surgery. And those that had speech impairment, four, four of the eight, uh, continued to have impairment, uh, some stayed the same and two went on to further surgery. So very good outcomes from the actual procedure. Um, in terms of uh, the case, there's obviously only a small series, but quite uh, clearly that they've outlined a simple technique that can be reproduced. Yeah, I think overall everyone was pretty impressed with this paper. Um, uh, fistula following cleft palate repair can be very difficult uh, to uh, fix. These were uh, these patients were having mucoperiosteal uh, flaps raised, um, irrespective of what previous flaps had been performed on the hard palate, with a very high success rate. And even for the couple of cases which recurred after re repair, they still had a very good functional result. Okay, the second paper we looked at was a breast reconstruction paper evaluating sterile human acellular dermal matrix in immediate expander-based breast reconstruction, a multi-center prospective cohort study. Again, this is from a recent PRS. Basically, this was looking at patients undergoing immediate breast reconstruction uh, using tissue expanders where the lower pole of the expander was covered with uh, human sterile acellular dermal matrix or ADM. The ADM was sutured to the position of the inframammary crease. The expander was then placed in a subpectoral pocket and the lower edge, the caudal edge of the pectoralis muscle was then sutured to the superior edge of the ADM. So the ADM acted as a sling for the lower bit of the expander. Expansion was started immediately where the expander was filled with fluid uh, until the ADM was tense uh, and then two drains were placed in the subcutaneous pocket and uh, the patients uh, then continued on antibiotics and, uh, uh, and uh, so this study had 65 immediate breast reconstructions in 39 patients and so what were the results? Yeah, so they had very good results with this. Uh, essentially, for this pa uh, for the patients, only one uh, had complications with uh, post mastectomy uh, flat necrosis. Uh, there was one case of unilateral cellulitis in a patient uh, who probably had other comorbidities. Important to note out of this, it was a fairly select group of patients that hadn't had radiotherapy that weren't uh, morbidly obese and didn't have significant comorbidities, so quite a 
uh, clear well cut uh, one. There were no seromas and no, obviously, deep infections. Yeah, um, one of the interesting things is that they had the three plastic surgeons working with 14 different oncological breast surgeons. So uh, one would imagine there's going to be differing techniques and uh, skill levels amongst the breast surgeons that they were working with. Yet still they had a very high uh, uh, success, uh, reconstructive success rate uh, using this technique of the ADM. The authors made a big point of saying that the particular product they were using was sterile ADM as opposed to aseptic ADM. Sterile meaning there's uh, one in a million chance of there being a microorganism on the ADM. Whereas with an aseptic ADM there's a much a uh, higher likelihood of there being an infectious uh, complication relating to the use of the ADM. And that's right, and they also looked histologically and saw that that sterile matrix was incorporated in the same way the aseptic one would be, so the sterilization process didn't affect uh, the incorporation of the ADM. So what do people think about this study? I think there was uh, you know, good discussion about the, the study and also the use of the product in, in um, uh, immediate breast reconstruction. So I think overall quite positive. Uh, obviously there needs to be further work done in terms of looking at patients that are in irradiated fields, whether it's a suitable product. Um, but I think it, all in all people were uh, interested in, and would incorporate this in their practice. Okay. The last two papers were hand surgery papers. The first paper was our classic paper looking at the Adelaide uh, flexor tendon repair. Um, so the name of the paper was the active mobilization following single cross grasp four strand flexor tenorophy Adelaide repair. This is from the European Journal of Hand Surgery in 2011. So the Adelaide repair was uh, described a number of years ago, has become increasingly common certainly here in Sydney and many of the consultants and almost all of the registrars are using it. Uh, it's considered a relatively straightforward repair uh, to uh, perform. So the details of this study was they looked at 73 zone 1 and zone 2 FDP repairs um, in 53 patients. And uh, so what were the other key points about this study? Yeah, so essentially um, the, the flexor repair was done with a four strand repair using a 3 or 4 o braided um, suture and then a 5 or a 6 o epitendinous repair across a whole range of uh, surgical skill levels. So essentially registrar through to consultant level. Um, they used, uh, they followed their patients retrospectively and made sure that all were followed up. Uh, in terms of what their outcomes, they were looking at uh, range of motion and they used the Strickland criteria there and graded everyone from poor, fair, good or excellent in terms of their results. So uh, the results showed that good 71% of their population achieved good or excellent uh, functional outcomes from it. Uh, only about 4.6% uh, ruptured and they they did track it all down all these all the cases um, to ensure what uh, the group followed up as. What's interesting is that the uh, three FDP repairs that did rupture were all four O's and none of the repairs using the three O uh, gauge suture uh, actually ruptured so that was a yeah. an important find. I think so while it wasn't statistically significant it certainly showed a trend and I, I'm guessing that that probably would bear out if they had the, the numbers uh, within the study. Okay. So the final paper we looked at was the effect of A1 pulley release after flexor tendon repair in a cadaveric model. Uh, this is from uh, Yale Department of Plastic Surgery in New Haven, Connecticut and published in a very recent PRS. Um, so what was, what, what was this study about in a nutshell? Yeah, essentially what they're looking at is whether or not if you release the A1 pulley, uh, whether the work of flexion will decrease uh, so the idea is if you have a tendon repair, uh, one of the two ways that you can ensure decreased rupture is have a stronger repair or to reduce the tension over that repair. So by releasing the A1 pulley, they're looking at whether or not we can reduce the work of, flex, uh, work of flexion at that tendon repair. So essentially what they did, they had four cadaveric hands. They subjected uh, hand one and two as a control um, to the A1 pulley release. And what they found is when you release the A1 pulley, your work of flexion decreases. So then when they did a, uh, in the hands three and four, they made a uh, cut in F zone two, and then did a Kessler repair of that cut. And they found that now when they tested the hands, the work of flexion had increased because you have the repair. Um, and 
that's subject to frictional forces. Then when you release the A1 pulley on that, uh, those repaired tendons, you find that there's uh, a decrease again in the work of flexion. So what they're showing here is whether that if you release the A1 pulley, you're going to reduce uh, the tension over your repair. Now clinically, that was obviously opened up to a lot of discussion as to, to the significance of that result. Yeah, whether you would then go, you know, if someone's got a zone two injury up here, whether you'd actually then make a separate incision in the hand and specifically divide uh, the A1 pulley just to decrease the work of flexion. Uh, the other question, which obviously wasn't answered, was whether the work of flexion would decrease with time, uh, with decreased swelling, with physiotherapy, with hand elevation and the like. Uh, and that's obviously not uh, a question that a cadaveric study can answer. It'd be interesting to see whether any clinical follow-up studies are resulting from this one. That's right, yeah. I think certainly people said they certainly wouldn't chase the A1 pulley and, and divide it um, just to, re to reduce the tension over your repair. All right. Well, that's it for our four papers. For those of you who are there, I hope you enjoyed the Journal Club. And for those of you watching now, thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye.